Hello, thank you for joining me on this lovely summer's day. I'm out for a pleasant walk in the woods in the Surrey countryside. And what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to go and look for a very mysterious mausoleum where bodies have come and gone. Sounds strange, doesn't it? That building there is the Chantley Heath Semaphore Tower, which I have just been to. So if you want to see inside that tower, because that really is something fascinating and a unique survival, please look at the link on screen now. But in this video, we're going deeper into the woods because there really is this very mysterious mausoleum, which I'm very keen to go and find. Well, this is quite a pleasant walk across Oakland Common. You can hear the birds singing. Really nice place to be on a hot summer's day like today. But the place we're going to is very mysterious and its backstory is even stranger. Usually with a mausoleum, it's where people are buried and they're laid to rest forever. But not this one. So mausoleums usually are quite attractive buildings, interesting styles, they can be quite large. This one is, is quite big, but it's very odd as to what actually happened with the bodies that have come and gone from this place. It was commissioned by a gentleman called Sir Henry Samuelson. He built it for his father, Bernard Samuelson, his mother Caroline and his sister. He wanted them to be buried there and the idea was generations of the family, the Samuelson family, would all be laid to rest there over the coming years. Things didn't quite work out like that. For a start, his father, mother and sister were already dead and they were buried down in Torquay. Although this was the family estate, the father, Bernard, had spent a lot of time down in Torquay. He had a steam yacht down there, so he very much liked it down there. But in 1919, this was um, commissioned by an architect. He commissioned an architect called Mr. Plum to design it. And it's got um, similarities to Montague House, which is a National Trust house in Somerset, which I've not actually been to yet. So he got them to design it and they actually moved the bodies of his mother, father and sister were dug up from their graves in Torquay. They, they were travelled. They travelled 170 miles into this Surrey woodland, and they were laid into their new home, which is this. This is the mausoleum which we've been walking through the woods to see. Now, this is where naturally you'd assume they would be laid to rest. Unfortunately for them, things didn't quite work out like that. We're going to go up to the mausoleum. So this is the big dome on top as we come into here, come up these stairs, as I say, it, it has, this colour of stone isn't what you expect to find in Surrey, it's more like something you'd see in the Cotswolds or maybe Somerset, it's that kind of orangey colour. If we have a look at this here, we have a look at that. So they they were originally buried down in Torquay. They've been moved up here. They were buried here downstairs. We're gonna go and have a look. Unfortunately, what happens, if you're wondering how on earth are they not here anymore, what could happen? Well, they were moved here in 1920. 1960, or early 60s around that time, a lady was out for a walk with her dogs in the woodland, you know, down the path, probably going down there, and she saw two men with a winch coming out from down there. We're gonna have a look down there in a minute. Pulling out a bronze coffin. So these, were, they were stealing the coffin because I suppose they wanted to, you know, for its monetary value, they wanted to you know, sell it off for scrap. She phoned the police. Unfortunately, the men got away, but luckily they didn't get far because further up the road, another police officer spotted this van with a faulty tail light and thought, that's odd, I'll pull them over and found the bronze coffin. But it's understood it was never returned to here, so I'm not sure if they got away or quite how it happened, but sadly, it never came back. Looking up into the dome. But as for Sir Henry Samuelson, he naturally would have been the next person to get buried here when he passed away, and you know he'd intended it for future generations of his family. But we're going, we're going to jump back a bit. Um, so I mentioned how in the 1960s, the people who were buried here left but before then in the i think it was about 1937 so henry samuelson eventually passed away he wasn't buried here he obviously didn't know about the unfortunate future this place had but he in latter years of his life was in ill health and he had moved down to the cote d'azur in france 
and he and his wife passed away down there. So they were buried down there. So they didn't ever. So he, you know, went against his plan. His plan was for future generations of the family to be buried here. He he wasn't. And then, as I say, it was unfortunate what happened that, you know, that the coffin was stolen. Hey, let's go down and have a look. Here's a bit of a mysterious place, after so very peaceful. I don't feel like there's anything sinister here, but that's another thing I was going to go on to. So, coming to here, this is like a little chapel. You can see there is a cross on the floor, and these much more modern brick walls. If there is any of the coffins still here, they're behind this brick wall. They've been bricked in. Unfortunately, there has been a bit of vandalism, as you can see. In fact, that's interesting. I noticed that that's gone. I wonder if that somehow got damaged in when they were trying to pull the coffins out. I assume it had gone that way out the door, but maybe they were using uh, some sort of to put a winch around. I don't know. Unfortunately, there is a bit of graffiti, and so that's the more modern of the bricks. So it, it wasn't ever the resting place it was meant to be. It's now just, you go out for a walk in the woods and it's a curious place to come and have a look at. Um, it wasn't quite what they had planned. So yeah, a bit odd. Let's have another look around the outside. So you can see each side underneath the building, that's where yeah, the, the, they would have been. Walk around here. I won't go round that side. You can see it's quite overgrown. It's so odd though. There's just you don't seem to see anyone. Oh, that's interesting. Look at this. Look, look here on the steps. See down there. It's these holes. That must be to let air in and out. So have a look. there's another shield here. Let's have a look at that one. go over the other side and have a look so inside I'm not too sure again if anyone knows more about it was there like sort of a replica of a tomb here it almost looks a bit kind of ruined not quite as it was intended and then you've got your quite high up up dome and on all four corners so it's, it's effectively it's symmetrical certainly down the middle and then you've got these columns so you've got eight of these on each arch, so just after the aperture of the arch, you've got these columns. Unfortunately, people have come and vandalised it. You know, I think that's a shame. That's the problem, it's in open woodland, anyone can come here, and it's nice that anyone can come here, but sometimes the wrong people come here. I think it's a great building, it's an interesting story, a bit of a sad one, a bit of an odd one. Um, but, you know, it's, it'd be a bit boring if everything had the same thing, so... Whether there's actually anyone in there now buried, oh look, there's some more, another, it's like an air circulation. See just there, see little holes. So yeah, I don't know if there's any bodies in there, but it's very weird. I don't feel, like I said, it doesn't feel like a haunted sort of place. There are suggestions that some, someone said that witches come here and practice their rituals. I don't quite believe that story. Some places you go, you kind of get that feel about it, but here, you know, it's on the edge of a peaceful woodland. Um, as for Hatchford Park, I'll just, that's another interesting bit. So when Sir Henry Samuelson sold off the estate, this wasn't included in the sale of Hatchford Park and it passed on to the local church. So it's, a, it's effectively a gravestone, it's just not in the local church anymore. So it's, um, yeah, like I say, a bit of an unusual story. So if you'd like to come and see this, it is, just be, be aware, it's a fair walk to it you're probably looking at maybe at least a mile's walk from where you, from the nearest road. Um, so, but it's, it's worth coming to see. And as we saw at the beginning of the video, I was at the Semaphore Tower. If you're staying there, it's a perfect place to come for an evening walk. And if you want to go to one of their open days, you could also come here like I have done. So from this rather unusual mausoleum in the Surrey countryside, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.